So, hello and welcome everybody to today's webinar about presentation skills. Before I start, I just wanted to give you some more information. Uh, we have three more webinars that are going to be taking place next week. We're going to be looking at business etiquette, uh, negotiation skills, and preparing for work. And for those of you who are able to attend all the webinars, including the one that we had earlier this week, and the one that we're having today, you will receive um, a certificate of attendance from us. So let's begin. Today's presentation is all um, about presentation skills. And before I started, I wanted to show you an example of a question taken from the Beck qualifications. And you can see here that this is a, a task that's taken from the, the reading part of the exam. And this is all about presentation skills. So everything that I'm going to tell you today is going to be very useful for you in improving your presentation skills and hopefully improving your skills for, um, for the world of work. But also, uh, these are skills that you're going to learn as part of your BEC qualifications. So let's have a look at what we're going to be doing today. We're going to start by uh, talking about how we plan presentations before we deliver them and then how we prepare for presentations, and then finally, how we deliver them. So first of all, let's look at planning for a presentation. Um, when you're uh, preparing for a presentation, it's really important that you think about these three factors. First of all, you've got to think about why are you delivering the presentation? This is really important because it could be a presentation that you're delivering for um, um, some, some colleagues or it might be for customers. You have to bear that in mind. You also have to think about who your audience is. Who are you presenting to? And the, once we know this information, it may well change the way that we deliver it. It might change some of the information we provide. And also, we need to think carefully about the structure of the presentation and how we how we develop that. So here on this slide, we can look at some of the different reasons why you would uh, deliver a presentation. It could be to instruct. So it might be that you want to deliver some uh, training to customers on a technical issue, for example. It might be that you need to inform. So you might be delivering a, a business case to a senior management team. You might want to um, inspire or motivate. So if you're delivering a presentation to students, for example, at school or at university, you might be looking to activate or stimulate people. And you do that through a, a, a team talk, for example. You might want to persuade, and that would be a presentation that you deliver to a customer. Or it may be that you wish to entertain. It might be something nice that you want to do on a Friday afternoon with your colleagues. Once we've thought about the purpose, it's really important that we think about these three issues. So first of all, how many people are you going to be presenting to? If you're presenting to a small number of people in a room, it's a very different experience from having a large auditorium with many hundreds of people. Um, the more people you have, the more difficult it is to uh, run interactive activities or discussions during the presentation. So you might need to think about that uh, when you're preparing. It's also really important to think about who you are presenting to, because the audience is really important. And depending on who the audience is, your presentation will be different. So for example, if you are giving a presentation to the senior management team at the company where you work, the way that you present, the style, the information will be different from if you're giving a presentation to a, a group of colleagues in your team. We also have to think about whether we're going to be delivering to customers, for example, because again, that would be very different from an internal presentation. And then you have to think about why they are there. What kind of information do they want from the presentation? And this is really important because if you prepare a presentation which does not answer the questions or the need of the audience, then it's going to fail. So it's really important that you understand why they want this presentation. Another factor that you can think of is 
who has sent them to the presentation? Have they come um, by themselves or have they been sent by their company or their organization? What's their mood like? Are they positive? Has something difficult happened at the company? Do you have to address that as part of the presentation? So there's lots of things that you need to consider when you're thinking about your audience and the effects that will have on your delivery. So let's have a look at the structure and the outline of a presentation. So you can see here that we start with an opening and the opening would normally be uh, an introduction, who you are, why you're here, why you're giving the presentation, and potentially um, the topics that you will cover as part of that presentation. And then you will break, break it down into sections. So you might have a different topic that you want to discuss in part A, and then again in part B and part C. You can have as many different um, topic areas as you like, but you need to structure them nicely. And then you finish by closing the presentation. And this would normally be uh, a conclusion, summarizing everything that you've discussed. You will also give your thanks to the audience for their attendance. And you might want to give them some more information as to where they can find uh, um, contact details, et cetera, um, within the organization. This is a really important um, acronym for you to remember. So it says, proper preparation prevents presentation predicaments. And what that really means is that if you prepare properly, if you think about who your audience are, if you think about what their needs are, if you think about um, ensuring that the presentation um, fits with their needs and with the culture of the organization and with the culture of the participants, then you're going to stand a really good chance of succeeding. So when we are preparing for a presentation, we need to think of these three areas, the content of it. So what exactly is the information that we are putting into our presentation, the visuals that we use as part of the presentation and the format and layout. And these are really important factors because we want to make our presentation uh, interesting for the participants who are listening. We want it to be informative and we want them to leave with a good impression of both you as a presenter and the organization and the topic that you're presenting about. So let's think first of all about the use of visuals when we create a presentation and here are some examples of the different kinds of visuals or activities that you might want to use. So starting at the top here we've got a video and you can certainly embed a video into your presentations, but there are some things that you need to consider. First of all, the video needs to be really relevant to the message that you're giving, because otherwise, what's the point of showing it? You could just give the information yourself. It has to provide more than you are able to present. Videos should be used sparingly. I wouldn't use more than one video in a presentation and the video should be of a short length. Uh, one or two minutes is about enough, I think. I think any, 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 anything longer than that and the audience may become disinterested. So do use videos, but use them sparingly and make sure they are both relevant and short. We can also use pictures. Uh, you can use pictures to great effect in presentations. I'm sure you've heard the phrase, a picture tells a thousand words, and that's true. Um, they can be visually pleasing, they can stimulate the audience, but they have to be relevant and they have to be of good quality. You can also put in some quotes. Quotes are very good. Uh, I often use them when I'm giving a presentation to customers um, and the quotes could um, use could be quotes from customers who are very happy about the products um, that you are presenting. So it gives uh, those in the audience uh, reassurance that there are other people who like the products or they could be inspirational quotes if you're giving a presentation or uh, as part of a training course, for, for example. 
Facts and figures are also very important, and we can demonstrate those using lots of different methods. We can use tables and different types of charts. We can make them interactive. But facts, facts and figures are very important, especially if you're giving technical presentations or presentations related to um, sales, for example, or accounting, things like that. Um, make sure that the facts and figures are easy to understand, are clearly laid out. And of course, if need be, you can spend some time describing them so that they help to reinforce the message that you're giving to the audience. Charts and graphs, exactly the same as facts and figures. And finally, one thing that you could use here, we've used the word story. So uh, I would use in a business context, I would take this as meaning a case study. So often, if I am describing something that's quite difficult, something quite technical, I give a case study as an example to the audience so that they can understand more about what the product does. You could also use other types of stories to um, relay your message. But again, make sure that your stories or your case studies are very good. Make sure that you know them inside out and you're able to, sport, um, to speak about them in a confident and clear manner. So it says here that visual aids are a supplement to the presentation, not a substitute. And what that means is that we can use visual aids such as graphs and photos to help us to convey our message, to make our presentation interesting and attractive to the audience. But they alone do not make a good presentation and they alone will not interest your audience. It's the way that you use those pictures and diagrams, etc., during your presentation to make it interesting and stimulating. So, using visuals, we should use them to make important points. So for example, if you want to show something related to the sales performance of the business and you want to, um, pick up on the point that the business has done very well and the and the sales are increasing over a certain period of time, certainly you would show a chart showing this clearly and then you would use it to talk around the point. You should put one major idea on each slide. We're going to look a little bit later about how the presentation slides um, should look, but one really important rule is that you should only put one main idea on one slide. And the reason for doing that is that we want the audience to be clear. We want them to understand exactly what we're showing on that slide. And certainly less information is better than too much information. And then the charts should be large. They should be large enough for people to be able to see clearly. So again, think about your audience. Think about how many people are going to be there. Think about where you're going to be presenting and the, uh, the technical and audiovisual equipment that you will have available. And make sure that everything that you have prepared can be seen clearly on screen. And then finally, it's really important that you proofread everything carefully, because when you've got people watching your presentation, they're going to be looking at your slides in quite a lot of detail and potentially for a few minutes, and they will pick up on any errors that you've put in there. And it's really important that we don't have any errors, because if we do, it gives a bad impression of you and it gives a bad impression of the organisation. So. Looking at the format and layout, this slide is a really good um, example of how we can use uh, colors and, ch and pictures effectively. So you can see that there are quite a number of colors here, but none of them um, stand out too much. They all fit together uh, quite nicely. The use of words on this slide has been used um, sparingly, but it's very clear to understand um, what it is. And also you can see that by the words that, that have been chosen, we've pulled out the important points that we want to get across in the presentation. So this is a really nice example of how you can use a visual with some good colors and some use of words sparingly to get your message across um, in, a, in, a, in a good way. So what to keep in mind when we're preparing our slides? 
let's have a let's read this sentence together it's quite complicated it is imperative that one attempts to restrict the complexity of the language utilized to convey one's ideas lest the audience is bewildered by the ramifications of the expression well this is just a little joke here and basically what we're trying to show here is that the language that's been used that sentence the way it's been constructed is not a good example of how you would want to present to the audience what it's what we're basically saying here using this very complex language is that we need to keep the presentation simple we need to display our ideas in a very simple and straightforward way so that the audience is able to understand what it is that we're trying to say being too clever trying to use language that perhaps the audience won't understand or trying to um, present topics in a way that you think might be academically challenging is of no use to the audience at all it's much better to be clear and simple with your approach and the way that you present the information less is definitely more when it comes to preparing presentations so let's look at the structure as i've said before we need to keep it simple use language that's clear and understandable to the audience don't use any words or phrases that are too technical or words and phrases that are too long or the meaning is too difficult for them to understand. Make sure that your presentation is not cluttered. And what I mean here is that we don't use too many colors, we don't use too many images, we don't put too much information on each slide. Remember I said before we should try to keep one main topic per slide. Use clear and readable fonts. I would suggest that you only use one or two fonts. You can see on this slide, I've got a larger font for the, the title and a smaller font for the text underneath. It wouldn't help if I used a font which isn't clear, or it wouldn't help if I used um, fonts that were um, uh, all mixed up. So, you know, two or three different fonts, that's not a good idea either. And of course, um, using uh, color with your text is also not a very good idea unless you have a really good reason and you want to highlight something. Don't have too many diversions in your presentation. So what that means is let's not have too, too much animation going on uh, that can detract from the message that you're trying to get across. I mentioned before, if you're gonna have a video, perhaps keep it to one and keep it quite short. And then you shouldn't have more than six points per slide. Again, we don't want the slides to be cluttered. We want the information to be clearly available for the audience to understand. And that's why we keep it to no more than six points. And using bullet points like I have done here is a really good way of doing that. You can always have lots more information in the notes section of the presentation so that you can refer back to those uh, when you're when you're presenting it's much better to put all the information you want to say in the notes so that you can see it but then keep the the bullet points on the slides nice and short and succinct so that the audience can understand what it is that they you want to say so thinking about the format and the layout specifically on written slides and we've looked at some of these uh, areas before so let's think about about fonts well i mentioned that we shouldn't really use more than two fonts normally i use one but i change the size of the font for the title and then for the text you can use more than one but keep it to a minimum because again it's all about making sure that your message is clearly understood as I mentioned before, you can use colors in your presentation, but make sure you use them sparingly and think about your audience. So for example, if you're giving a presentation to your work colleagues, it might be okay to make it a little bit brighter and more fun. But if you're giving a presentation to the corporate board or to an important customer, um, you're not gonna be using uh, humor or visuals to try and get your message across. It's important that you keep the colors to a minimum, but use them in a way that's attractive and interesting to the audience. The third point is an interesting one about paragraphs. 
Well, I mentioned that we should try to keep the information on each slide to a minimum, six bullet points as a maximum. We shouldn't be using paragraphs at all. You don't need to put a paragraph into a presentation because what are you going to do? You're just going to read it off the screen. It'd be much better to summarize that, that, that paragraph, learn what it is that you want to say, and then do so. It's really important that, you, that your main ideas are clearly displayed. And as I said before, we should have just one main idea per slide. Anything more than that and your message will be lost and potentially the audience could be confused. And finally, as I mentioned before, bullet points are really good. It helps you to keep your sentences to a minimum and it also helps you um, get ready for the next bullet point, what you need to say next in the presentation so it helps you to plan what you're going to say. So let's think about some of the things which are uh, best avoided in a presentation. Well, you can see on this slide, there's an awful lot of colors here. Um, again, it might be fine to use those colors if your audience is a, is a classroom of uh, school children, for example, but you wouldn't want to use a presentation like this with senior colleagues or customers. Also, you can see here uh, that we've used uh, a number of different fonts in the uh, in the presentation slides. We've got best avoided in the presentation, all sorts of different fonts there. That's really not um, a, a good idea at all. And then the picture and the title don't really go together. You've got best avoided in, in presentation, and then you've got a picture of some confused people. So I don't think the picture conveys a very good message uh, of the audience here at all. So, as I said before, please don't make bad colour choices. Loud or garish colours are not a good idea unless your audience would like them, an audience of, 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 of school children, for example. Um, don't put dark text on a dark background or equally, don't put light text onto a light background because if you do that, the audience isn't going to be able to read what you've said and it's very it's very important that they can read everything clearly they don't want to have to struggle and 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 uh, and, and you know look look hard to understand what it is on on the screen and then also try to avoid colorblind combinations or in fact any combination um, that may uh, 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 create noise for the eyes of the uh, of the of those attending the presentation. We need to keep everything clear and simple. So please don't make those uh, bad color choices. Okay, so let's have a look at this slide. There's quite a lot of things wrong with this. So uh, first of all, uh, there are far too many pictures here. Um, I said that we should use pictures sparingly and they should help you in your presentation and to make it interesting for the audience but the presentation slide that we can see here there's far too many images there's all different kinds of images we've got photos we've got cartoons we've got other things um, it, it 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 really creates a lot of noise uh, for the customer um, for the for the for those who are present um, who are attending the, the presentation so keep those slides very clear and simple. And some rules here. Use pictures, but don't let them use you. This is really important. Pictures are there to help you, to stimulate you, and to stimulate the audience. Okay, They shouldn't be the most important part of the presentation. Keep them simple. I've said this again and again. It's so important. Okay, Too much can divert the audience away from what you're trying to say. So if your pictures are too interesting or you've tried to put something funny on the screen to, uh, you know, to add a bit of humor and it takes away from your message, that's not a good idea. And it says too many pictures could also make saving a presentation difficult. This is a really important point. Um, 
in my own experience at the moment, because of the situation we find ourselves in, I'm delivering uh, lots of presentations and webinars from home. And I have to send those webinars to my colleagues around the world. If I've got too many pictures, too much video content, it makes it difficult to send those presentations. It also makes it difficult to load them up, um, for, for, for example, for today. And uh, we don't want that. We want it to be clear, simple, easy to use. So bear all those things in mind. Okay, so now we're going to go on to talk a little bit more about how we uh, deliver a presentation. And I'm sure you, you are familiar with this gentleman, Mr. Steve Jobs from, from Apple. And I think this is a really good picture because Mr. Jobs is, is giving a presentation here. And look at his body language. So we know that he's describing something. He's very open. He's using his hands. I've been using my hands a lot today as well. You probably can't see them because of the webcam, but I've been using my hands all the time to explain. He's got a very open posture. He looks confident. He looks like he really knows what his subject is and he's comfortable with the audience. And this is really important. Okay. So these are some really important things that you need to consider because when you're giving the presentation, all eyes are on you. And it's really important that you're able to deliver that presentation in a confident way. So we need to think about body language. Now, when you're delivering presentations like I am today on a webinar, your body language isn't quite as important because I'm sitting down. You can just see the top half of my body and sometimes me moving around. But when you're giving a presentation in front of people, your body language is really important. Think about your posture, how you stand. Think about how you use your hands, okay? It's very important that you project a confident image, an approachable image, and you represent the company in a good manner. So your body language is very important. Don't slouch, don't hunch your shoulders, don't put your hands in your pockets, don't kind of keep touching or scratching your head, or if you're nervous, don't do any of those things. You need to be confident, good posture, good use of hands, give a great impression to the audience. Your grooming is also really important. Nowadays, office environments are far less formal than they used to be. I always used to wear a suit and tie to work. Now I find myself wearing um, an open collared shirt and a nice pair of trousers. But you need to think about who your audience is. You know, if you're going to present to a very important customer, you probably still want to wear a business suit. If it's Friday afternoon in the office and it's a dress down day, you'll just be in your jeans and t-shirt and that's okay if you're presenting to your colleagues. Also think about the way you look. If you have a beard like me, make sure that it's well trimmed. Make sure your hair is in good, good shape. You are representing your company. You need to give a good impression to the audience. Therefore, you need to think about your grooming. Eye contact is a really good one and one that I'm often asked about. And I've got a few techniques here um, that, that you can use. It is important that your audience understands that you are maintaining contact with them. And it's also good for you because you can gauge the opinion of the audience. How are they reacting to your presentation? Are they bored? Are they interested? Did they find something funny? Do they look like they want to receive more information? So you need to keep eye contact, but it can also uh, be uncomfortable to look straight into somebody's eyes. So there are two things I do. What you can do is focus on um, a space on the person's forehead just between their eyes. And by doing that, when you're looking at them, it looks like you're looking them in the eye, but you're actually looking just above their eye line. And you can flick between the spot in, in, in between their eyes and their eyes up and down like that. That's a really good way of maintaining eye contact and, and it not being too uncomfortable. The other thing that you can do is, if somebody is talking is move your eyes between their eyes and their mouth sort of up and down between the two. And again, it means that you're maintaining contact with them, but you're not looking into their eyes all the time, but you can clearly understand um, what they're saying and they know that you are interested in, 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 in what you're saying as well. So that's important. Then thinking about your voice, Kate. Okay. 
This is really, really important. And it's so simple. Think about it this way. When you are projecting your voice to a room of people, you want to make sure that they can understand what you're saying clearly. They can, that you are able to uh, speak with confidence and that you're able to project your voice. In some cases, you might be given a microphone to talk with, but again, it's equally important that you understand and how to use that microphone, okay? You can't shout into a microphone. You can't have it too close to your mouth because if you do, then um, it will pick up sounds as you speak. So make sure that you, you speak slowly, clearly, you're able to project your voice well and that you sound confident. Something else to consider with your voice and how you project is whether the audience are made up of people whose first language is English, if indeed you are going to be giving your presentation in English, or whether um, their English proficiency level might not be very good, in which case you need to speak more slowly, more clearly, and stop regularly so that you can check that they've understand, understood what you've said. So thinking about some of the delivery do's and don'ts, okay? I said it's really important that you bear in mind that you are projecting the image of the company. And so it's very important that you act uh, in, 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 in the correct manner. Um, do introduce yourself, do speak clearly, do have positive body language, do look confident, make sure that your grooming is, is, is right for the audience, okay? Um, don't slouch, don't put your hands in your pocket, don't hide behind a rostrum if there is a rostrum. Think about who the audience is, think about your pace, the speed of your speech, make sure that it's interesting. And also one thing I'd like to talk a little bit about is the use of humour and jokes as part of a presentation. My advice would be be very, very careful with how you use humour in a presentation. If it works well, it can be very successful and it can help you to gain the trust of your audience. But if it doesn't work, then it's an absolute disaster and you will lose your audience. So I would say, please don't go into, into a presentation thinking that you're going to tell jokes and uh, make humorous comments, okay? Play it as straight as you can. If during the course of the presentation and you gauge the audience reaction and you think, that it might be okay to make perhaps one humorous comment, do so and see what the reaction is. If the reaction is, is, is not great, certainly don't do it again. But always be really careful with humor, okay? More often than not, it will fail. So my advice would be, don't do it. Okay, so now, I, I, I talked a little bit about the importance of body language. And what we have to think about is both the body language of, of you, the presenter, and also um, the audience as well. So for example, um, if you are the presenter and you are uh, giving some uh, quite uh, difficult information, perhaps it's something, perhaps the sales figures are not looking particularly good this year, or maybe the company's had to uh, um, close some of its offices, for example. If you're giving that kind of uh, advice, don't stand there you know, with a smile beaming from ear to ear. Um, your body language should reflect the importance of the message that you're giving across. The other thing that you should do, and the second picture here, you can see that the guy he doesn't look very neat and tidy. He's looking at the clock. You know, he doesn't really want to be in the room. Um, it's very important that when you give your presentation, you are giving all your time to the audience. You have to make them feel like this is the most important place in the world and there's nowhere else you would rather be at that time. Trying to rush through the presentation, looking at the clock, you know, having problems with your notes, not being able to get the slides to work. This is all very bad and gives a very bad impression. OK, so make sure that you give the audience all of your attention, that you're well prepared and you know exactly what you're going to be delivering. And in the third picture here, you can see that this gentleman uh, uh, looks bored. Remember that the audience is going to react to the way that you present. So if you look bored and disinterested, so will they. But if you come into an auditorium 
full of people and they don't look particularly interested, don't be scared. See that as a challenge because through your energy and through your delivery, you can turn that audience from one that's not particularly interested to one that's going to be eating out of your hand by the end of the presentation and, and, and listening to every word that you say. So make the audience feel that they are valued and, they're, that, and that, that they are important and make sure that your body language um, is correct for the message that you're giving across and that you are reflecting the values of your company. Okay, so these are some good uh, things that you should do. So smiling certainly gives the impression that you're friendly. What I try and do is when I come into the presentation room, if there are some members of the audience already there, I go and talk to them. I smile, I shake their hand, I tell them who I am, I ask them who they are. And then by doing that, you've got some friends in the audience already. So it doesn't matter how many people are there, you've already spoken to some people, you've made a contact with them, they've seen you smile, they know that you're a human and you know that they are a human as well. And that can really help to uh, calm any nerves that you might have before the presentation. It's always a good idea to nod when somebody else is, is speaking. And by doing this, it means that you've understood that they're talking, you're listening attentively, to what they're saying, and it gives them a good impression of you as well. And as I mentioned, I've already talked about eye contact. It's important that we appear confident. It's important that the audience know that we're engaged with them. But as I said, there are some techniques that you can use if you feel uncomfortable looking people in the eye, and you should, certainly shouldn't stare at anyone or look into their eyes for too long because uh, that will concern them. Okay, so these are some examples of uh, bad body language. If you remember when we saw that picture of Steve Jobs a few slides ago, he was stood, great body language, he had his, had, had his arms out in front, welcoming and warming to the audience. If you cross your arms or you cross your legs, you immediately look defensive. Don't do that. Keep your arms by your side or use them to explain things as I'm doing now, but don't 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 cross your arms or or your legs. And the same with fidgeting hands, tapping feet, touching your face, uh, scratching. You know, these are all examples of, of, of how somebody appears nervous or bored to the audience. And remember that the audience reflects you, your values. If you're looking nervous and bored, then they're going to feel that as well. Okay, so here are some really uh, good examples of, of postures. Um, so you can see in the, the picture here at the uh, in the top left-hand corner, the lady uh, is standing, she has good posture, she has her hands out, similar, similar way to Steve Jobs. That's a great example of how you should present. The next picture is quite interesting because we've got three different characters here. Uh, this is a, a political uh, debate, I believe. And you can see on the left hand side, the gentleman, he stood, has good posture. He's looking at the audience. He appears to be uh, confident. Whilst the other two members, they're standing on, on one leg. Uh, they're having to look down at their notes. They don't have such a, an aura of comp as confidence as the other character. And then down at the bottom here, these are three really bad examples. So uh, hands on hips, pointing at the audience, not a good idea. As we said, crossing your arms makes you look cross or uninterested. And the third one, when you've got the hands on your hips, also uh, doesn't make you look very interested at all either and maybe a little bit cross. So avoid those, positive posture, use your arms, stand straight, be confident. So, as I've said before, proper posture conveys confidence and authority, and that's what the audience want to see from you. Let your audience know that you're in charge and that you want to connect with them. So, I'm often asked whether it's okay to stand or 
whether we should sit or stand when we're giving a, um, a presentation and whether we, we should walk around or not. And I think that all of these are possible, but it really depends on the presentation that you're giving. So for example, I always try to stand at the beginning of the presentation when I'm introducing myself and using the slides. However, there might be a point during the presentation when you would like the audience to discuss something or to think about something. And it's at that point that I sometimes go and sit down because that signals to the audience that I want them to interact with each other and that I'm going to take a step back. So in that situation, it's okay to sit down. But I wouldn't sit down in front of an audience normally because how are you going to show your confidence? How are you going to use your body language, your posture, your gestures to, uh, to convey confidence? So stand up most of the time, but if you're giving a discussion or you want them to, uh, they are discussing or you want them to think about something by themselves, that's a good opportunity to sit down. And walking around or not, it's a really good, good one here. I do walk around during presentations, but it's important that you don't do it too much. Imagine your audience are watching a game of tennis, and if you're moving around all the time, they've got to follow you like this. It could become quite exhausting after a while. So don't move around too much, but you certainly can if you've got a large auditorium. You could move to the front of the stage, or you could move stage left or stage right so that you can give that part of the audience your attention. And being slightly active also um, helps the audience to, to stay focused on the presentation. If you're just stood still all the time in the middle and you're using a very monologue voice when you're talking, or maybe you're mumbling, gives a very bad impression. It's gonna make your presentation very boring. Use your energy, activate your energy, and that will activate the energy of the audience. Your voice is also very important. And I would suggest that at, when you're delivering a presentation remotely, as I am today, delivering a webinar, your voice is even more important. The best way to think about this is think about when you're listening to the radio and think about the way that the radio presenter uses their voice, okay? Their voices are always interesting. They use different intonation, different pitches, different tempos, so that you are engaged with their voice, okay? You shouldn't speak too quickly or too slowly. I mentioned that if your audience perhaps do not all speak the language that you're delivering the presentation in um, uh, very proficiently, you might want to slow down your delivery, but you don't want your delivery to be so slow that it becomes monotone and boring. As I said before, there's nothing worse than hearing someone present using just one kind of voice and really slowly, and then you'll just fall asleep. You don't want that to happen. So use your voice, make it energetic. Don't use too many fillers. And by fillers, I mean, um, yeah, you know, right, and then, yep, and that's what I think, so, you know, don't use those words. It's confusing to the audience. You want to project the image of confidence. So don't use too many fillers. What you can do, which is a good way of practicing, is either record yourself giving the presentation or have a colleague in the room when you're doing a practice presentation. And then they'll be able to tell you, do you use any fillers that perhaps you're not aware of? Is your voice a bit too monotone? Do you need to speak up? Practice. Practice always makes perfect. So, as I said, be wary of using the same phrases again and again. Clearly pronounce the words that you're using. Use stress if you want to make an important point. And you can also use pause and silence for effect. Let me give you a good example of this. Let's say that you are giving a presentation and you've asked the audience to discuss something and the room's getting quite noisy and you'd like to start again. Instead of shouting to everybody, okay, everyone, be, be quiet, please. We're gonna continue. I move to the front of the room. I stand quietly and stilly, smiling, looking at the audience. And they soon pick up on the fact that the presenter isn't talking 
And if the presenter isn't talking, perhaps they don't need to talk either. And that's a really good way of quieting down the audience and it, prevent, and it stops you from having to shout. And if you're giving a presentation, you want to keep your voice in good condition. You don't want to be shouting too much. So when you speak, as we've said, you need to articulate what you want to say clearly. You can use pauses for effect. You can emphasize particular points using your voice. And it's also really important that you check the volume of what you're saying so that everyone can hear it clearly. I gave an example before of a radio presenter and how they use their voice and they modulate and they use in, in, intonation. Also, a great example is, uh, is a political speech. Have a, look, have a listen to some of our um, big political leaders from around the world and see how they use all of these, especially pausing to give great effect when they're talking. OK, so now we're going to think about our delivery and how we do it and whether we should read notes or not. So the first thing I should say is that if you're um, just going to be uh, reading the whole uh, presentation out on a piece of paper, it's going to be incredibly boring for the audience. And they're going to understand that actually you're not engaging with them at all. You're just looking at the piece of paper and you're reading it out. That's not a presentation. That's a speech. And that's not going to work very well. However, I also understand that we don't always give presentations where we're 100 percent familiar with the topic or perhaps we haven't given the presentation before. As I said, practice always makes perfect. So the more times you give the same presentation, the easier it is. But if it's the first time, you might want to prepare um, some confidence cards. So these are different from having uh, from having a whole page of of notes. Each card will have a few bullet points on. Each of those cards will be related to a slide in the presentation. And you can use them if you just want to uh, quickly gather your thoughts and make sure that you don't miss any important points. So you will still be using the presentation slides to talk, but you'll have these cards available with just with a few, with a few sort of points on there and you can use them to support what you're saying. However, if you are going to be using cards, there are some things you need to remember. Remember that you're going to have to take the card and put it down so, and use the next one. So make sure the cards are all in the correct order. The worst thing that could happen is if you rely on confidence cards and they appear in the incorrect order. So you must make sure that they're all there. And then you can use them and you should practice with them before you make the presentation. OK, so you can see, you can see here you should refer to them. Don't read them. Put only the important points, as I mentioned. And also something that's really important is that the, the confidence cards should be made out of card, not paper. Why? Well, card makes less noise if you're moving between one card and the next. And paper, it's easy to bend, fold. You can get them in the wrong order more easily. If you use card, it's much simpler to keep them all in one place at one time. So. Also, it's really important during your presentation that you rewind and recap what you're saying. So appropriate phrases should be used by the presenter when you're making those presentation slides. We've mentioned that. But let's have a look at some of these other things and whether you agree with these statements or not. So the first statement, certainly we agree with that. It is appropriate to use pauses. How about the second one? Is it OK to put your hands in your pocket while making a presentation because it looks cool? No, you must never put your hands in your pockets while you're making a presentation. It doesn't look cool at all and it gives a terrible impression. Multicolored slides look attractive. Well, we've said that you can use some color in your presentations, but don't use lots and lots of colors. Don't use colors which clash. Don't use dark colors on top of dark colors. Let's have a look at this one. It's K to use this in, the, in your slide. After all, everybody knows it. No, you must never do anything like that. You know, your slides need to be accurate, clear, good use of fonts, 
bullet points. You don't want to use anything like that. I mean, I can't even read that very well. So no, you must make sure that everything is clear and concise. Video clips and images can make presentations interesting. That's absolutely true, but make sure that the video clips and images are not used too much. So as I said before, one video per presentation is okay. You can use some pictures. They can be very helpful, but they should help you to tell the story. They shouldn't control you. Lots of information and paragraphs should be displayed on the slides. No, remember, we want to make the slides as clear and simple as possible. No more than six bullet points, certainly no paragraphs. Complex and complicated sentences and language make a great impression on the audience. No, absolutely not. In fact, the complete opposite. Don't use any complex language you feel the audience might not understand. It doesn't make you look clever, okay? One should dress keeping the audience in mind. Absolutely. As I said, office, um, office attire has changed over the years, but we have to dress appropriately to the audience. If you feel that the audience requires a business suit, then wear one. OK, if it's OK to wear um, casual clothing because of the audience, that's all right as well. But you really need to think about it. Let's have a look. At, so, so let's carry on. I've given you lots of tips and hints about becoming a good presenter. But I think it really boils down to a few things. You've got to have great language and communication skills. You've got to have confidence in what you're saying. And I think it also helps as well that you really know your presentation and you know the topic well, okay? If you know your presentation, if you've been through the slides before, if you've practiced it, then that's going to help to build your confidence. And it's also going to help you with your communication skills because you know what you want to say and how you want to say it. But these are the most important factors when giving a presentation. So do you want to, language, to develop your language skills and gain the confidence needed for a presentation? You may possess excellent communication skills already. But if you do, how are you going to improve? Um, how are you going to prove that to your employer or a potential employer? And you may feel that your communication skills need improving. Well, how are you going to do that? Well, we recommend, as I said at the beginning, that you take a, a BEC qualification with us that's really going to prove that you have excellent communication skills and help you to get that great job that you're looking for. And in preparing for, for Beck, we've got lots of great resources that you can find on our website and also on the Beck app, which has been prepared specifically for our students in India. Do have a look at it. It's really, really good. You can find some more information there and, and, and some links to the, the, uh, the website where we've got more information. So remember, that the BEC qualifications have been des designed specifically to help you to improve your communicative com competence. They're available at three levels, preliminary, vantage, and higher. They test all four skills in English, reading, writing, listening, and speaking. And they help you to gain and prove real life English communication skills, just like the ones that we've shown today. They're all related to the CEFR, if you can see that over here, the Common European Framework of Reference. And this is a scale that's used all over the world to prove the levels of English language proficiency. And the BEC exams are all related to that. And when you prepare for BEC, you're also going to learn some brilliant communication skills, socializing and networking, attending meetings, giving presentations, as I've done today writing reports, telephone skills, problem solving, negotiating, decision making, these all form part of the BEC qualifications and you will learn these skills in preparing for them. So these are some points here that I think are particularly important for you. You can build your English language communication skills by studying for BEC, just as we've done today. You can enhance your CV. If an employer is faced with two job candidates, One's got Beck on their CV and the other one hasn't. They're going to be far more interested in the candidate who's got the Beck exam. It's going to help you to stand out from the crowd. 
it's going to prove that you've got what it takes because studying and passing for a qualification isn't easy. It needs determination to do so. These are qualities that employers are looking for. You can take back and use it all over the world. There are more than 25,000 employers all over the world who recommend it. You get some great um, report based on your what you're able to do with the language. It tells you exactly how good your reading, writing, listening, and speaking is. And as I said, we've got lots of free resources available for you um, that can help you to um, improve your skills. So, and here again are some more resources available for you to prepare for Beck. So that's it from, from me today. I hope that you've enjoyed today's presentation. I think we have got a few minutes available for some questions at the end, but I just wanted to say uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk to you. I've really enjoyed today's presentation and I hope that you found it useful as well. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ian, very much for the brilliant presentation. And we will have a few minutes open for questions. If any of you have any questions, please uh, type them out in the chat box. So there's been a lot of questions about certificates. Yes, those who attended the certificate, uh, attended the entire webinar will get a certificate sent to that email ID. Uh, if you have any pertinent questions regarding the topic, please do um, type them out in the chat box. It's just open. How to deal with nervousness, Ian? Oh, yes. Well, that's, that's a really great, great, great question. Um, I think, first of all, really know your subject. There's nothing worse than making a presentation and we, we're not quite clear about what it is you're talking about. So know your topic. Make sure that you've gone through your presentation slides and you've practiced them. OK, and then um, you'll also find that you might feel nervous the few minutes before you go in and start. But as soon as you start, because you know your presentation, you know what it is you're going to say, you'll find that that nervousness will go away. And as soon as you start, you'll get into a rhythm and you'll feel much more confident. And you'll and and and, and you should. The other thing is that you should try and in, enjoy it. Try to engage with your audience and enjoy what you're doing. And then you'll feel much more confident. Yeah, so I think some people have asked for the link to the webinar. You'll get it on your email ID. Uh, you can also drop us an email here for uh, the webinars that happened last week. Somebody is asking, what if I don't have a very good voice, Ian? Um, so then what do I do? That does really matter. Um, my, okay. voice, my voice modulation or okay. maybe I don't well, have an accent. Well, listen, th the thing that I would say is that is that we've all we've all got a good voice. It really just depends on the way that we use it. Practice makes perfect. You know, I deliver webinars all and presentations all the time. So I've had a lot of experience in understanding how to how to use my voice. So you need to do the same. As long as you are clear that you can project your voice well. OK, these are the important things. Having an accent is not important as long as the audience can understand what you're saying. Make sure that you don't speak too quickly. Make sure you don't speak too slowly. And remember that everybody's there is to listen to you. They're not there to laugh at you or to make fun. They want to listen and understand what it is that you want to say. So it's down to confidence again. Feel positive about yourself and your voice and practice, 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 practice. It always makes perfect. Thank you, Ian. I was actually just going to say there are three important words to overcome, you know, um, any nervousness, which is practice, practice, and practice. And that's yeah. what <laughs> exactly is what you said. Yeah. yeah. So somebody has asked, if you're given a presentation, so what would be the first thing that you need to do? The first thing in the presentation, well, I always start the presentation by saying hello and welcoming everybody. Um, you could then uh, give your name and tell them why you're here to present to them. As I said earlier, I just want to mention something again. A really good technique that I do is I, I'm always in the in the presentation room first. As people come into the room, engage with them, talk to them, speak to them, shake their hands, make friends in the room. And that's going to make your presentation much, much easier to deliver. So you do have our email address over there, which is enquiries at cambridgeenglish.in. Do drop us an email. Ian will also be doing three webinars next week. Uh, one is on preparing for work. One is on negotiation skills and on business etiquette. 
please do join us for that webinar next week, um, almost the same time. Uh, so you could uh, please join us. I have mentioned it over here. The one is on Monday, which is the 15th of June from 3 to 4, 4, uh, 4 p.m. Uh, I've given you the link over there. So thank you so much, Ian, for joining us all the way from Cambridge. Um, and uh, really privileged to have you with us. I think oh, today is our you. second webinar. And we have three more to go next week. So um, if you like uh, like the webinar, do send us your feedback. You'll be uh, sent a feedback link by um, an email. Do drop us an email if you want to know more details about working with Cambridge, offering the Business English certificate in your institution. Do drop us an email, and one of us will keep in touch with you. So thank you once again for joining us. And uh, stay safe, everybody. Yeah. Goodbye. Thank, thank you, everybody. You. Goodbye.